Hi guys, good morning. Oh, it's like six o'clock here. Uh, my last video wasn't, there was something not right with it, so I had to delete it. Um, so I thought I'll just do a little bit here because, um, I don't know, to try and recap, but I just realised that, hey, you're really, really tired, you've barely had any sleep and you feel like crap, so you might not be able to remember. It was basically where, and I don't know if this is happening for anyone else, but I, I reckon it probably is, where our, our bodies are really not functioning right and, you know, I just feel like I'm um, on information overload. Literally, there's, there's so many downloads coming in, insights, whatever you want to call them. And um, I just feel, I, I think I'm trying too hard to retain the information and the, um, the, the anti-force, I call it the anti-force now, you know, the, the fractions left Thank you, Nathan. Left a really good comment with regards to the name. Let me, let me see if I can find that. Um, Psycho-spiritual mind parasites. That's right. It's in our head. It's in our heads. It's in our consciousness. That is what the disease, the sickness is. And we all fall prey to it still. And um, it wreaks havoc with our consciousness and thus it wreaks havoc with our life and I want this channel not to be about doom and desperation and rage and hatred I want it to be a channel of um, of love and I don't mean love in the mundane sense most people when you say when you mention the word love um, they don't understand what it means and they start to they start to giggle or they start to shuffle about if they actually feel uncomfortable with that word um, because it's it's lost completely lost its meaning in this this world that we live in people think love is I don't know Kim Kardashian having a good shag with some I don't know, it, it, you know, they, they don't understand what love is. They think love is, oh, I'm in love with this person and we're having great sex or that's not love. Everything in this world is, like I say, it's contrived and it's the actual meaning that we seek and that we need. Um, it's like looking for a needle in a million haystacks, you know, because everything is cheap and trite and contrived and mundane and banal. It, it just is. I'm not saying that everything, everything is actually, because that, that is not true. I come across people, I come across beautiful animals in nature or just a beautiful tree or a, a flower or a really beautiful scent or some really beautiful music or some be beautiful art. Um, I come across goodness and beauty in myself but I also come across ugliness and a, a lot of fear and feeling trapped in myself of late as well and when that happens, I guess it scares the shit out of us, isn't it? Because we feel like we're not getting anywhere, like this is it, there, this is all there is, this is all there is. And it's interesting because I had that, I get that periodically, I get that voice in my head, like a voice actually, this is all there is, this is all there is. And I know other people get that as well. You know, you're, you're a broken down mess and this is all there is. And... And look at other people, look at her, look at him, look at them, look at there and over there and over here. They're very successful and they're spiritual. You should be like that. You should be like other people. You're a failure. You're inadequate. You know. And it plays on our pathologies. It, it, we inherit these pathologies the minute we're born. 
from our ancestors, you know, our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, regard, I mean, whatever circumstances they lived through, um, we inherit. Look at Israel. Look at Israel. This is a case in point. You get, well, I mean, there is, there is, again, there are questions about World War II, there are questions about, and, and I honestly feel that, <clears throat> yeah, because everything is, is, is presented to us as, as fact. This is what happens, this is what happens, this is what's going to happen, and that's a fact. Um, but deception and gaslighting is the name of the game, and distraction is also the name of the game, so we can't really be certain. We're just taught to accept everything without asking any questions, without doing any research, to just accept the words of the, the authorities, the, the schools, um, the mainstream media, whatever, you know, the historians, the scientists. Um, and if you, if you decide not to do that, but to dig deeper and look at it from a different angle and investigate, and you find out that, hey, that story wasn't true, or that story was manipulated in such a way to make us think this, when in fact it was that, then, whoa, all hell breaks loose, yeah? But Israel, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a country full of people that are traumatized. I mean, there's no doubt something happened um, in the Second World War that traumatized a lot of Jewish people, and they, uh, they left and went to Israel and then became it became a nation of, of bigots and and people that um, don't treat their fellow human beings very well at all. Um, I guess the same happened to Germany actually, you know, in fact the World War World War Two traumatized a hell of a lot of people as well as World War One, but anyway, I di I digress yet again. Um, Oh, it's... Where was I even, man? <laughs> Everything's gotten very uh, heavy. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy. <laughs> and, um... I'm just at a point where I feel... Like something seriously got to give. It really does. Because I'm just going around in circles and I don't know, maybe my videos reflect that a little bit. You know, and I don't just want to do videos for the sake of doing videos. If I have nothing useful or inspiring to say, then I'm just not going to do any videos until I, I, I do. Um, and it's sort of hard enough as it is because I'm putting myself out there which in a way makes me feel quite vulnerable. I'm talking about stuff, topics that are quite incendiary to a lot of people, the system. Um, I don't want to be an agitator, and that's the last thing I want. I'm not interested in that, you know. I'm interested in gnosis. I'm interested in... Um, fulfilling my purpose. I don't believe my purpose is to be a slave and to be ignorant and to languish here forever and ever. I don't believe that at all. I think that is why people like us get so much anti-force happening, you know, so much fucking distraction and, you know, just feeling really ill and, and, and things happen and it throws you completely, it throws you off balance. Um, I mean, in the new age they're always going on about, oh, how you should trust, you should just trust, you know, unquestioning. Um, and um, I don't believe in that either, I think trust has to be earned. You know, you don't just go out there and trust people, do you? Not after what we've been through. You can't. You have to be extremely highly discerning, and so any kind of information, especially, well, pertaining to 
um, spiritual, I hate that word, man, oh, but anyway, any kind of, of, of mystical um, information has to be, it has to be put through the filter, but again, that isn't so simple, because we have pathologies running the show, we're so insecure, you know, we, yeah, the rat pill people, man, we're so insecure still, we, we are fully aware, well, some of us, that we're broken and that we're fucked up. And along with that comes this big question, how can I trust myself? Because if you can't trust even yourself, then how the fuck are you going to trust anything else out there? Trust has to start here. So how do you earn your own trust? You know, how do you work on your own integrity? How do you show yourself that you can trust yourself? I mean, <clears throat> self-trust comes by degrees. I have more self-trust now than I did a year ago. Certainly more than I did 10 years ago. Yeah. But these last few days I've been feeling so crap. It's physically, you know, and just... <sighs> Man, distractions, literally just one thing after another and it makes me it makes me feel like either we're really getting somewhere, because otherwise the anti force would not be so overwhelming. Like you know, the voice in your head saying this is all there is, this is all there is, focus on the mundane, focus on the mundane. You're you're in trouble, you're doomed. It, it likes to say that. It likes us to think that we're screwed and that we're finished and that we're doomed, doesn't it? That's an overwhelming sense that you get when you look at the world around you and when you look within yourself and you see that even after years of work on yourself, really going in there, uh, you've still got issues <clears throat> getting in the way. I've got nothing else to do but to keep doing what I have been doing because giving up is simply not an option. I mean, what would giving up even constitute? Y you know, don't <laughs> it's like um, there's just no way to really give up. We, we have to keep digging. Not necessarily for the truth about what is happening around us with regards to politics or religion or corporations or any of that because we know that it's all utterly, utterly corrupt and putrid. We know that. I mean, I, I stopped getting into the whole conspiracy theory arena. I walked out of that place quite some time ago because it's pretty obvious. We don't need to know all the nitty gritty of it because it's pretty obvious what's what in this world. And it does seem to me that there is, there is no longer any impetus for evil to hide itself and to operate covertly. I think that it reckons that as long as you give people their toys and their distractions, they'll just accept whatever you do to them. And for, the, for a lot of people, that is simple. It's just the case. They, they, they don't care. As long as they get their smartphones, um, you know, as long as they get to eat their McDonald's, you know, and chuck their waste out of the car onto the road or into nature, as, as long as people get to talk absolute rubbish with each other about rubbish topics and cling on to their beliefs and their Stockholm Syndrome, they're, they're happy and they will just take whatever crap is given to them, you know. But for us, it's a very different story. We see and it's gut-wrenching. And we also know that there really is nothing that we can do about it, you know. You can go and protest and it's absolutely ineffective. It won't make any difference. Why ask evil not to do evil things? Oh, please don't hurt us. That's just a complete waste of time. We all have moments, in fact, many moments of, of despair where we feel this isn't going anywhere and I can't climb out of this pit. I am trapped. 
And when you feel that way, there's only one way to go. The only way is up. So keep trying. And I know that sounds kind of insipid. I know it does, but I can't think of anything else to do, frankly. I really can't. It's, um... It's working through the inner crap. <clears throat> you know confronting the sickness within us with courage and yeah no denial we have to look at it all within us because that which we see outside that we find so overwhelmingly horrendous also lies within us it is a fact when you jump in a fat of vinegar, you're going to be drenched in it. So you need to have a good wash. Probably several because, you yeah. know. I know this from personal experience that this is how it works. You get so... Because when all this shadow stuff comes up, which is the mind virus, the consciousness virus, and what it's done, um, when all this stuff comes up, it is horrible. It always happens before shifts take place. And it's ramped up over the years to a degree now where it's, it's big. It's just, it's just really overwhelming, really intense. Um, I would expect, I fully would expect that now people would, even myself, run across behavior patterns within themselves and and whatnot that are not patterns you're you're going to feel good off uh, about you know it's like oh god or i'll just go and hide behind the sofa now you know um and addictions definitely i remember the first time i gave up smoking and it was so easy it really was this time no no it's because all kinds of stuff is coming up from within me and it's making me feel like I'm not coping very well. It's overwhelming. It's not just one or two areas of dysfunction. It's loads. It's beyond my grasp. It's beyond my mind to, to understand it. And we go on overload, just literally like a tsunami of, of logistics mystical logistics so we've got to ride it out and see where it goes forget about the world out there forget about contributing to it in any way but contribute to that which is of the light contribute to that which is of love feed that sometimes we just have to 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 realize whoa what am i doing what am i doing no, that is not the direction I want to head in. And you have to grab yourself and pull yourself back from the precipice and think about what your motivations are. Um, there is not just evil in this place, there is love. And I think that we've just been so traumatized that perhaps we've lost our faith in the power and the magic of love. It's easily done when we see what's happening and when we confront our own inner demons, you know. It's easy to get lost in it, very easy. I say keep it as simple as possible. We need to look after ourselves, we need to look after our physical health, we need to rest. And we need to consciously sit down and think, right, where am I heading? What's happening inside of me? And face those things, you know. <clears throat> Give up smoking. Get around to that. <sighs> Self-love, self-care, self-compassion. These are things that will come up now what's happening in our own psyche, how we mercilessly bludgeon ourselves. 
and how that just reinforces these negative patterns, which is why we do it. It's the virus making us do that, attack ourselves, because that is what reinforces all these pathological patterns. It just does. Just like a prisoner will continue to re-offend because prison reinforces that habitual behavior. It's as simple as that. It's exactly like that. And that is the pattern that we need to break out of. Because there is nothing that we can do as such to fix things. I'm not sure it's about that. I don't think it is. I think it's beyond fixing. You can't fix evil. You can't. It's beyond fixing. It, it's, it is what it is. It's about letting go of that shit. No longer contributing to it. No longer feeding that which is dark. But feeding that which is of love. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'm no guru and I'm no teacher. But I feel that that is important. And I may have lost track of that a little bit over the last kind of two months. It's perhaps why my videos have been quite dark. But then again, yeah. I mean, this channel really is, it's, it's just about my own sort of journey and my own internal musings and ramblings and my experiences. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend to feel wonderful and go all ohm when I don't, because I, that would just be bullshit. Um, my intuition tells me not to be afraid, well, rather than feel the fear, but don't let it be your master. Feel the despair, but don't let it be your master. Do not take counsel from your fears. Because those, those are the mind parasites. Because if we do that, we'll just stay stuck perpetually in that cycle. And nothing good will come of that at all. It, it just won't. So, one way or another... We have to find our center, love, because love nourishes us and love sets us on the right path. It's hard enough being in this world for us, but allowing ourselves to be trapped by these patterns of powerlessness, fear, victimhood, hatred, rage, it's just not going to help. Yeah, it feels so... It's what we're used to doing. And that is what keeps evil here somehow. It keeps us in us. You know, we don't want to do that. We want to clear that out. Oh. So hence the Herxheimer reactions and, and all these, these churnings within us and our bodies reacting, our health going to pot. Um, Herxheiming, detoxing, and I think that's really very much what's going on at the moment, so I'm just gonna keep doing the best that I can, and I think that's about all that we can do. Um, it's a very difficult path, this. It really is. <laughs> man, oh man. You know, it's very tough. So I think we should all give ourselves a pat on the back for having stayed the course up to this point, because we have, um, and for having done the best that we can do and for continuing to do the best that we can do. And yeah, courage integrity no denial no denial no self-judgment self-scrutiny yes definitely but it has to be done with compassion I've always felt that consciousness is the key to it all and that our consciousness is in infected it's not, it's malfunctioning. It's a mind parasite. Um, it 
makes us ill and it creates mental, Ill mental illness, it, it creates physical illness, it's responsible for all this shit and all this darkness. I'm not saying we're responsible for the darkness in the world, we're not, but we are in it. We are situated in that murk. But I think we can be, we are beacons of light in the darkness. Even, yes, even though we are so vulnerable, even though we are so um, fallible and, you know, we get it wrong all the time and we have issues and whatnot and whatnot, but we have light in us. We have love in us. And I think it's important to remember that right now. It's important for me to remember that right now, to get back to that. There are things that matter, there are things that are important, there are things that serve goodness, love and purity. There is the magic, the imperceptible sense that something is working here, something is, is at play here and it is a good thing because it shows me things and it sustains me. It's elusive and it is mysterious, but it's very here. I've noticed that over the years, I have. I've been in through quite a few of these cycles, yeah, these internal cycles. In fact, I've been through them more than, well, anything else. Um, I know this, it, it doesn't work the way all these spiritual, so-called spiritual people say it works. They make it sound like, um, Oh, you just do this and you just let go and you just go here and you just go there and it's like, oh, wow, yeah. You know, it's not like that. It's very intense and it's very hard going. And our shadow often gets the better of us. It's, it's used to being completely in control. So it requires um, constant vigilance. And constant, uh, you, we, we keep taking leaps of faith. We keep giving, um, giving it that little bit of trust that we can muster and that little bit of faith that we can muster. Not in the things of this world. No. We must disentangle from the things of this world. We must find that which is of the light and allow it to nourish us and be open to receive goodness, guidance, power, goodness, you know, that's really what that is. To be able to see that which is good and of the light and to also be able to see that which is of darkness and evil within us and around us with great discernment and compassion and to know that we are not of darkness, we are of the light for all our inner foibles, for all our confusion and our fear and our rage. We are children of the light. We are alive. We are souls. We are warriors of the light. We are often confused. We are often afraid. We're not feeling very well, but we must stay the course. We must feed that which is of love because everything else has to die. It has to die and it is dying. And that's it. I guess that's all I have to say today, people. Um, yeah. <laughs> Lots of love to you all. Bye. Bye.